I'd like to thank our partners at Flexio for powering our science mission and sponsoring this video so that we can stay informed and educated when severe weather strikes. The Team Dominator Storm Chasing Mission, as sponsored by Flexio, has used many different delivery mechanisms to deploy sensors inside tornadoes. Starting with the ground-based probe, which is designed to be a heavy-set probe anchored to the ground, allowing the tornado to move over top the probe, recording valuable scientific data and video inside the tornado. We got it deploy! We got it deploy! We got it deploy! No, go! Go! It flew away from us! Get right up in there that we're going to deploy, okay? Get right up in there! We also there. experimented deploy. with the deployment of deploy. sensors using a transparent sphere called a Zorb bubble. The Zorb bubble with contained sensors and a camera, and we deploy that from close range to a tornado with a Zorb rolling along the ground inside of the dramatic, powerful inflow into the tornado. With all the low-level winds streaming in toward the very low pressure inside the tornado, the Zorb, in theory, should roll within that inflow and then get launched inside the tornado vortex. This thing should get pulled in, don't you think? Yeah. You ready? Let's go, guys. We've also utilized model rockets to deploy sensors inside tornadoes. But then we met Mark Simpson, who is an expert at designing miniaturized scientific sensors that could stream data back in real time to a ground receiver. In 2019, we launched a rocket inside an EF-4 tornado in eastern Kansas, and that trackable sensor was carried inside the tornado by a parachute probe up to nearly 12,000 meters above ground level. We recorded dramatic pressure fall data inside of that tornado, and we even recovered the sensor over 30 miles away from the deployment location just south of Lawrence, Kansas. Analysis of the trajectory of the high-resolution GPS data show that the scientific sensor did two revolutions around the then EF-3 tornado just south of Lawrence before rocketing upward at vertical velocities of over 60 meters per second up to nearly 12,000 feet above ground level. I mean, it may try to do it back there too, or it may wrap up all the way around. We've even used RC aircraft with a wingspan of up to 15 feet to deploy parachute probes from the inflow region of a tornadic supercell. This video is from 2009, showing the Dominator RC aircraft dropping a parachute probe in the inflow region of a tornado touching down in south central Nebraska. And of course, we intercept tornadoes directly with our armored tank-like vehicles called the Dominators. Here's an intercept in eastern Wyoming from 2009, where we measured the strongest wind gust ever experienced by a Dominator of 155.2 miles per hour. But Mark took things a step further. With the development of the Gravitron sensors, very high resolution pressure sensors designed to capture the gravity waves that are emitted from tornadoes and other powerful storms. The goal is to deploy this array of Gravitron sensors in the path of a tornado in a grid-like formation as indicated here in pink. The Gravitron sensors are then capable of measuring very high resolution pressure data at ground level inside of a tornado to better understand gravity waves that might be shipped out in advance of the storm. I'd like to thank our partners at Flexio for powering our science mission and sponsoring this video so that we can stay informed and educated when severe weather strikes. So when it's, pink, when it's blinking green, it's ready to go and it's recording. When it's blinking orange, you need to connect so it sets the time. We need accurate time because we're using triangulation. Um, so if we have more than one sensor, we can determine the speed and the orientation of, say, meso vortices or tornadoes that are approaching and things like that. That's fantastic. It's like filming for blinking, yeah. <laughs> And so I'll be able to mount this to a pole using flex tape or something like that. I could just use flex tape, mount this to a telephone pole or a power pole in the path of a tornado, and I could even pull the data off afterward? Yes, that's right, yes. Just mount it, just use some flex tape to mount it to a pole or something like that. And then, um, and then when you're done, we can download the data and analyze the data and see what's in there. It's a gravity wave sensor similar to we've got in uh, subsonic and also in surgeon nature as well. 
So very accurate microbarometer data. That's great. I'll have the whole network of eight of these ready to deploy during the outbreak Friday night, then through Saturday night. There's definitely going to be a lot of tornadoes, probably a lot of them at night, but we can still record data inside a nighttime tornado. So we able to say, see very, very small um, uh, pressure changes in there, even down to you know individual gusts, um, you know, slight differences in wind, uh, as well as uh, frequencies. We can actually see uh infrasound to some extent as well because it uh, does record it's not not as detailed as subsonic but um but you know in a tornado it will record those infrasound noises as well which will be interesting to find out down occasionally right because it's going to be using data so um if you go to the interface you'll see there's a um a trash can mm -hmm. so you need to you need to press that trash can and just format it All right, we got a blinking green light. Looks like the clock is synced on that one. Thank you, Mark. I think these are ready to deploy. That's awesome. Have fun. Let's get some tornadoes, eh? Yeah, it looks like this one's going to be a big event. Nocturnal outbreak, but even at night, we can still record data inside these tornadoes thanks to the Gravitron network. These are the Gravitron sensors. These measure temperature, relative humidity, and also very high resolution microbarometer data. Basically, if a tornado is sending out gravity waves, this thing will measure it. And it also could be a key to early warning systems for tornadoes. And the key to deploying these Gravitrons is to use flex tape and then adhere them to a power pole, a telephone pole, or a tree. Some type of an object in the path of the tornado. We want to get it close to the tornado. It could also be inside to measure that pressure fall inside of the tornado. But the key is to flex tape this to an object in the path of the tornado or even flex tape it to the side of the dominator here as dominator four is going to be very close to the tornado. I can simply flex tape the Gravitron to the side of the dominator four and it's going to record that fine scale microbarometer data, that intense pressure fall that drives the damaging winds around these tornadoes. That's the goal with the Gravitron network. I can see it right in the middle. We're just, yeah, uh, we, the circulation on it? Yeah. Because we can still go east and catch these. Yeah. We can still go to Norfolk and go east. Yeah. I mean, at least we can go north and east. We can still watch this. I think we should go east now. I think we need to go north. Or try east. to intercept it. I think we need to go now. Absolutely. What if it has a tornado now? One of our first ever Gravitron deployments was ahead of a record-breaking derecho on December 15, just a couple weeks ago in eastern Nebraska into Iowa, where over 50 tornadoes were confirmed. I'm about to deploy the Gravitron sensor. There you can see the tornadic supercell rotation coming right up the road here, south-southwest to north-northeast. And this is gonna be one of the spots where we deploy the Gravitron, right here, right in the base of this stop sign. Watch out, this goes downhill a little bit. Right here, careful, it's gonna go downhill. We deployed the Gravitron network just to the south and just to the east of Norfolk, Nebraska, and sampled the dramatic pressure rise just ahead of the gust front with embedded tornado cyclones back behind. You can see the gentle undulations and pressure here. Those are gravity waves that are caused by that rapidly advancing front. Much like if you throw a rock into a pond with little waves emanating out from where that rock makes impact to the water. Tornadoes are similar in the atmosphere with waves embedded inside the atmosphere getting sent out by the strong disturbance that are the violent winds of a tornado.